So, thank you for taking the time to have a look at my presentation. And um, I will run through the brief with you very quickly. Um, so basically the idea was to um, the design museum would like us to design a domestic room, like any domestic room, and show how that would be designed sustainably. Um, we're allowed to interpret how we wished. And um, so just give you a brief synopsis of the space. It's four meters by six meters. No natural light comes in. There's no electrical um, supplies, power sockets, light switches. We are literally doing everything, installing the whole lot. Um, we do have two arches at two and a half meters wide. Um, but apart from that, this is the space that we were provided. Um, so first of all, looking at sustainability, I just decided to define what climate change really is. And obviously I surrounded this with a lot of buzzwords. So I can't let it throw right now. Um, you know, things like you know, rising temperatures, melting ice caps, whatnot. When I was researching this, what I came to the conclusion of was that climate change is effectively what we call the detrimental effects. Um, the human race up to the planet in terms of us to benefit the way that we live, as opposed to us working around the planet, we're trying to make it work towards us and it causes climate change. So then I, then I was thinking, well, what are sustainable practices? You know, like there's, and there's a lot of these terms flying around, and one that I constantly hear about at the moment is net zero, which I think is very ambitious, but I believe that we might be going a bit far with it. I think sustainable practices are actually about limiting the detrimental effects that we're having on the planet. So that was kind of that, that was how I approached um, this project. So the space that I picked um, was the living room, as you can see. My reasoning for this that I've listed, so the less noticeable impacts, this was people may think about materials. And what that we use. But I feel there's not enough information actually about the chain of how it gets to you. If I buy something for a bathroom, let's say, and there's stone and or trash or what material, really screw the shower where they got that from. Um, whereas I found like a living room is a lot more textiles. So I thought that I was quite curious about that, about what impact that really has. Um, also, I feel like other rooms like the bathroom and kitchen. Sustainability is more noticeable because you use water and heat, um, and these are usually seen in your bills. So you are actually more aware if you are using more energy in that context. Whereas actually the living room, the TV's lights, you don't notice it as much. So it's very curious about approaching it that way. And another is lifestyle choices. Again, compared to other rooms, there's less of a function about the living room. A dining room you will dine in, a bathroom you will wash in, a kitchen you will cook. The living room is it's an indulgent place. You know, it's about what you know, being very much what do I want? You know, and it's it's kind of a bit more of a selfish psychology like that. And that's why I was curious about how do you design sustainably for that? And another is a good opportunity to design. I really enjoy designing furniture. Um, and that's why that's a big part of the reason why I picked the room. I thought, how can we actually design? Furniture pieces in a sustainable manner. Um, because I get carried over the product and see people over the past, over the 20th century design that's very free. Sometimes they do look at new materials, sometimes they don't. So that was just quite a personal um, angle there. So I researched living rooms since the 70s. Um, because I feel like since the Second World War, People have really viewed how they live differently. You know, it was, it was, I think the First World War and the Second World War were two big markers for the shift of how we live in the First World War. Um, I feel like maybe in the 50s and 60s was a tad too raw, it's had too much change. So I lived it from the 70s, and this is what I found. So a better, a better life, as I've highlighted there, it's about, you know, the post war feeling, you know, what's the post war going on. But people have had time to think as well and actually really consider it a lot more. You know, the family unit, I feel like before the war was, it was a very unstable time, but I just I kind of see since the 70s, you know, people have time to kind of think. 
indulgence as well, as we discussed before, and that's what I liked about the space. And um, we're in the 21st century, especially with the COVID pandemic. That indulgence at home has really become accentuated for some people. Uh, within the age of you know Netflix, Amazon, and whatnot, taking all of the cinemas, you know, in terms of um, premium films, which again I thought was a bit more of an indulgence aspect of home life. Updates to domestic lifestyles. This is to do with home life has changed. The way that I grew up is different to the way my parents grew up, which is different to the way that my children will grow up. Because the world is just constantly changing and evolving. My parents always romanced me. Our life was, you know, very abundant in the 1980s, you know, um, and we discussed how long day is. But this is always changing due to new reactions. And improved technology. Um, you know, once fairly self explanatory, but this, this is also like this is ramping up at a pace. Um, it's tough to keep up with at times. Um, and that was something else I was really curious about. You know, I don't know what it means to you know, smart TVs, or an LCD screen right here, or two laptops. So, this is what I focused on to do with sustainable practices in the living room. I found that a lot of materials, when I was doing my research, we use a lot of virgin materials, but I don't think it's always necessary. I will admit, I don't know fully enough about that. But I was just curious about well, do we always have to go with the virgin material and go with something else? Transportation routes and overseas suppliers, uh, with an era of uh, Wish.com and companies like Amazon. Um, we got to think about where we're sourcing our products from, where they're manufactured. There's a lot of zigzagging that can go on to steal products to you. And uh, less holistic lifestyles. I guess it depends on your, um, how you define holistic. Uh, but again, you know, it's, it's, you know, I've seen some people like to live out TV in their living room, but they'll exercise uh, yoga then instead, you know, I think about plants. But again, even with plants, they can still have negative effects. You always have to be careful. So my concept is make less, use more. Um, I saw the images of the garbage patch in the ocean, for example, yet still be using lots of plastic. Um, he drew the aluminium company uh, in this building as well, for example. I saw this then about when they use uh, virgin material when they source it and then more and more at recycling. And I just, yeah, I know um, there's a TV show we have in the UK called Blue Pizza, which is angry with children. Uh, I don't know if you guys have come across this. Ever since I was a child, they were promoting recycling. These things, and plants and plastic bottles and whatnot. So it's always been in my head that you can always use what's around you. And that was the driving force behind my design. So I went by the principles of design, if you're familiar with this concept. Um, five aspects that I focused on, and the idea is we focus on these, then you have to come up with sustainable design. Starting with energy efficiency. I just acted like a consumer on this part. So using low energy uh, lighting and heating, researched LED light bulbs. There are heaters out there on the market of different ratings and whatnot, but I just believe that that is more of a consumer action. There are other people that are out there designing these devices. They're far more logical than me. Um, fantastic engineers, so I operate like a consumer. Smart plugs, if you've come across these before. Um, they will basically limit the amount of power that the device uses for it to be as much as it needs, not exceeding it. We imagine um, like leaving your car when it drains the battery, right? So if you imagine that concept, it's basically a lot of wasted energy. So my idea was to use that again, thinking like a consumer. That's not part of the design, it's actually more about how you use your devices. And using USB. Uh, quite a lot of devices, you know, like mobile phone and whatnot, that can be charged by USB. There are lights that can be charged by um, powered by USB, um, and it's low energy. Uh, I would have to say that this aspect of my design, I didn't focus on too much. Um, again, because this was more of a consumer led aspect of the design. Um, reducing waste. So I thought, how can we reduce waste and make less usable? Concept and says it a little bit itself. 
Um, but so I did uh, recycled metals and woods. So iron is going to be one of the materials. That's, that features quite heavily. Uh, and bronze as well is kind of recyclable and also I'm using copper. But that's more thinking about how we can have a different color. You know, metal just doesn't have to be silver or black. So I played around with that idea. Um, woods is, this was two different ways of recycling. One is the one that's quite clear and obvious. You know, we take old products, wood floors, and scaffolding. Uh, doors, uh, and from wood, and you repurpose that. There's another source that I found. Like. So when I was a carpenter uh, five years ago, I went into a forest in Wadley in Surrey, and the tree surgeons there were cutting down trees for the good of the forest. Um, again, they know more than I do. But they said nobody's coming to pick up this wood. So they were trying to find ways to dispose of them. So we went down and we had a look and we got to talk, spoke about loads of fantastic species that I've never heard of. I've even forgotten them now. But it was great. There's one, for example, which was we cut, cut the woods. It was pale uh, white and then it went this really warm red color. And it was almost like glowing off the woods. And this is a native species to the UK. And we have a lot of this, but we're not looking for it. So I thought I'd source it from there as well. Um, use materials made from natural byproducts. This is very fun. There are lots of people doing very enjoyable and experimental ideas and how to make new materials from waste. Two that I focused on were actually fabrics. Q-Milk. When we make milk, uh, there's always a byproduct. Uh, basic milk that cannot be used. Uh, but this happens during pasteurization as well. And this company, Q-Milk, has found a way to make it into fabric, like cotton. Um, but that is like to be made in the UK. Um, the other one was Pinia Tents. So this comes from pineapples. Uh, pineapples are grown in the UK, but pineapples are still being imported. My idea behind this being sustainable, even though I'm trying to minimize transportation routes, is that this is actually sustainable because it improves the, um, the income for the pineapple producer. Now they waste products off the leaves, that's what they use it for. So the leaves they turn into like a leather fabric. There are a few around. And so that's one that I went with, and I was quite curious about how you can improve that economy. Uh, and using natural dyes of fabrics. Red cabbage can be used as a pH indicator. Um, you can actually make any colour from using that as the base. It's so my idea to use that as the basic dye. Um, and in this one, I've used spinach as well, which can lose ship and uh, the pigment comes out spinach. Reducing the environmental impact. Okay, so when I say about using iron, uh, timber, wood, even bronze, I actually found that I could source that quite close to the design studio. This is a small map here, this is down in uh, just side of the castle. The iron gates I could find within five miles of my flat. A lot. I went to websites like Gumcrete and eBay, and they are actually set up so you can find it to your radius. Even the woods, the felt timber, is in walking in Surrey. It's not that far away, it's very near. And I'm seeing people importing woods all over the world. So that was the idea behind that. We can literally go to our back gardens and, and find these materials. And also, it kind of takes the control away, which I quite like. You know, quite what you can. Local manufacturers. Using those for bespoke pieces. I'm not sure if you can see, but um, I have my design studio here on the other side of the park, less than half a mile away. I have, a, I have two blacksmiths, three carpenters, so he does a whole street, and a list of other trades that's expanding. Go a bit further north, there's grass blowers. I found there was an abundance of these tradesmen in my local area. Again, as I say, I want to design furniture. But with this design, I just thought, well, this is about the spoke pieces that you're making. This isn't mass production. So you can do it on the smaller scale, and you can create a scene out of it. So that was the idea behind this. And not using chemical products such as paint and glue, looking more for you know, good welding, good carpentry techniques as well, knowing how to do a proper dovetail, you know, like really pushing 
close tradesmen to be really good at their profession. And that's a bit, a bit more of an interest in this. I will admit, there is some paint that does get used. Um, this is uh, white paint that's used for the skirting. While doing my research, I also thought, what happens to everything that's discarded on the street? Surely it goes somewhere. This map was a bit bigger, kind of around about here. There's the packing refuse center. The Solid Council go around every day collecting everything that's gone to the street. I went down there, massive hall, lots and lots and lots of stuff. I was genuinely really impressed by my council, how much work they're doing. I did check, I went down, took lots of pictures as well. Uh, if you want to see them, I'm more happy to show them. Um, a lot of the stuff you can't pick up and take. Uh, this is the reason for this, it's about how they, like, for example, TV screens. It's about how they actually dispose of them. Um, they also got whole sections like batteries, for example. But paint was something that they said, please can we take this? Because I'm sure we've all seen the tubs of white paint after someone's used it as a primer and it gets left there, it hardens. And going back to the use of those materials, some people were making more of it. Um, and they just had colours and it was predominantly white. And I know the whites can change between pigments and tones, even between the batches that are made. There was enough there from one bucket that you could certainly do the skirting. Um, so that was one point that I did move away, but I'll explain a bit more about how I sold that in a moment. Um, think long term. This one's very short and sweet. It's just about making sure that we use all materials. They stay like that for a long time. So mine are the natural material that I went with. I didn't paint them. Um, that's my idea. So people want to repaint rooms. You know, I sold one of that. And the material I did go with as well is naturally uh, water resistant, therefore, it does not get mold. Um, it's also known to be quite thermal as well. And robust wall materials. And as we go through it, I will show you it wasn't just about being robust, it's about the idea of using material that you don't mind seeing scratch on. Uh, I love my mother's bits, but my car is just growing mad as a child. You know, because you just worry about getting marked. So that's the kind of thing in long term as well. And create a healthy environment, which I found incredibly interesting. Uh, up until about two years ago, I had this quite strong belief that plants deserve that they should be outside because that's where we get them from. And uh, then I researched it more and more, researched indoor plants. Notice that a lot of we use outdoor plants to be indoors and vice versa, and these plants aren't surviving. So it's also about using the right plants and using them appropriately. Um, this point here for improved air quality. Plants lower the VOCs that are released by paints. So even though I have used paint, I've used a low amount. And when you see where I place the plant, it's ideal to soak up the VOCs in the cap. But I also research plants and I put them in specific places as well. Some help us focus, some help us relax, you know, some lower anxiety. Um, so I did do some research into that. As you'll see, I've actually separated the study and well, work from home zone and the social zone. So, so now to talk to you about the design of the space. So I know it's quite a lot of information, and that's kind of what I went through when I was coming up with my ideas. So do you mean that you need that you can do this at the same time? For what, sorry? No, the roof said that the single height is three point one. The arches for the two planets plus one. Oh. Yes, so why is the arch important? What do you mean? Well, is there an axis? Which the they have to find you that information, but it leads to other exhibitions. So the idea will be that there will be a series of. Oh, this is going to be an exhibition. Yes. Uh, yes. So I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. So it's meant to show how we can live sustainably, design sustainably. But it's designed to be used by the public. Judge everyone in between. So I, um, I divide my plans into fixed elements and also the furniture plans or the everything. The floor is uh, recycled wood or upcycled wood. Ideally made from doors. Um, that was my intention. And I've done them in these small squares, which are half meter by half meter, and divide them into three separate planks as well. This was to actually open up the opportunity to use more pieces of wood. I'm not saying that shape doesn't fit. I thought if we do this, you can cut it down and you can use more. Okay, and make less. Right, so that was, that was the idea there. Um, this is the divider in the center. 
So this is going to be a work from home section, and this is going to be a socialising area. Obviously, since the pandemic, work from home has become a lot more common. We're seeing people put up to buy this at the moment, and we will see this develop over time. But I decided just to experiment and um, separate the two areas. Uh, the material that's made from is, I believe they call it pulp wood. From a material that is made from recycled paper, that has been recycled so many times that it now cannot be used for paper. And a very clever individual has figured out a way that you can actually make this into a hard material that can be used as a divider or as a wall. So that was the material there. And then there are these um, shelving units here. They're made from the felt timber. So they can be cut because they're bigger pieces. I and mean, when we were getting the wood from the forest, it's a whole tree. You know, so we do have, we can use these bigger shapes there. So we're about. These are our innovations. So this goes to the thing about some sorts here, probably discussed about in my film. Um, these two here, just to recap with where your innovation is going to A, B, C. These are mirrors, okay? They're meant to be two wall mirrors, floor to ceiling. So when I did my research again, you can't recycle the mirror. Once it's made, it's made, like a solar panel. You can't recycle that like regular glass. When I went to the Peckham Refugee Centre, I saw quite a lot of mirrors. Um, some smashed, some not. Some just take one clean hit in the corner. So this wouldn't likely be the actual pattern that I go with. The idea is that we take the shape of the mirror, they tend to be rectangular or square, and we make the pattern out of that, minimizing the waste, and then we fix it with iron and take it to the blacksmith. And we create something unique, and obsessed with things being unique, um, yeah, you know, by accident. I decided that like, it's something that person really enjoys. That's kind of need to make a bit more my design ethos in there. And these two here, you see it more on the render. They're sconces. They're meant to be made out of bronze or copper plates. But that and that's what they are. I'll explain them a little bit more later. This is the reflected ceiling plan. I couldn't fix ceiling. So I wanted to experiment a bit more with the um, decorative elements. I feel like when we, when we design sustainably, there's a big focus on uh, minimalism. I'm not saying anything negative about that at all. It's fantastic. Um, but I actually thought, you know, we can still continue the same ideas that we have, um, which should be limited by the idea of design sustainably. And yeah, I want to put in a, um, a big ceiling, it's going to be learned from here and here. So, the same material as the floor, because I want it to be reflected. Um, and this idea actually came from a designer called uh, Angelo Dongio, the gentleman. Um, I do, it's just a very romantic notion about uh, in the bedroom where he likes the bedroom and he loves soft light. He said we throw ourselves into being awake too quick. And he's just got me looking at kind of um, you know, the fake ceilings. Uh, I've never signed one before, so I'm going to try it in this context. And then this is the furniture plan. Okay, so quite a few different elements to this picture. Hello. Hello. I also researched biophilic design. Um, but I kind of want to look at it in a little bit more of a unique way. This is definitely this is a two seater. These are both made from felled wood again. I want to exemplify the live edge here. So that was the idea behind that. This two seater here, there's a bar behind it. The idea behind that is to actually find a branch. And make, make that work. So, literally making the shape of nature and incorporating it into my designs. These two copper tables here, um, they're made from felt wood, so it's always have a difference of colour. And underneath, you'll see that there's that iron frame that keeps this one um, held up. This is wooden iron as well. This lamp and this chair, which are also bespoke designed, they are also made out of wood and iron. As, oh, sorry, as well as 
this book, okay? So, and also the TV stand. So I thought, well, I'm going to limit the number of materials that we use as well. I found that I could get iron very easily, very accessible. I found I could get the wood very accessible. So I thought, okay, well, let's stick to those two then and just try and make it a bit more um, like a collection, as it were. And then these are the um, plants, which I'll explain a little bit more further. This is another bespoke chair. Um, this is actually uh, it turned out to be uh, purple and copper. I just got very experimental with it. Um, and again, experimental with different sizes and this one. These are our elevations here. And so I've got over quite a few pieces of furniture. I've just kind of delved into a few more. Well, actually, I forgot to say, this lamp, along with this one here, which is also bespoke, this was actually made out of willow. I can source from Burgess Park, I can see from the window of the design studio. This naturally runs in the park, no factory processes at all. It's naturally coloured either purple, orange, or green. Uh, that I'm led to be the colour scheme of my design, um, almost like the all the secondary colours. Uh, and that was great, I was just embracing the natural environment is. This is a Fibonacci bookcase, uh, which was a bespoke piece. Just to talk about the biophilic design I did with that. Um, I don't know if you call it biophilic, but I still made around this idea. And it's based on the Fibonacci sequence. I've been having a lot of fun with that designing, not sticking at it in the order of going 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 30, 21. Take those numbers and make different divisions. Um, we can go through later with that, but it's about, you know, using numbers in a fun way. You still don't have to limit yourself to do with sustainability, but it is an opportunity. Um, and this is uh, the heat that I've just selected. Found this online, as I said, it's fire, lots of information about it. It's low energy, um, it's electric, um, and it's highly rated by um, a lot of people that understand that better than I do. Uh, I've also got TV in because as much as we might want to promote, you know, not looking at phones or screens or devices, we do. Um, I'm not saying anything wrong with that, so I just want to include it in my design. This is the electrical plan. Um, also, it's going to be a big ceiling up here. So these are all going to be very low energy light bulbs. Quite a lot of them in there, all running on the same uh, line. That's meant for soft light, and actually, I want this light to be selected so it benefits plants here and the plants here. You know, when I did my research on plants, a lot of them can live with artificial light. The plants that generally don't need that much natural daylight, they still will get energy from the right light bulbs. Um, and the lighting for the work from home area is different to the lighting in the um, storage lighting area. I provided double plug sockets around the space. Well, one might have a look at the lamp pin, maybe put another heat stamp, that has a bit of energy once there. They've all got USB ports to encourage people to use the USB. Um, when this? this is how people walk around the space. Okay. Um, simple traffic flow. I didn't want it to be something that was so focused on the roots. Um, it's something that really, um, I really like to remember. Um, I want to encourage people to walk around it freely as if it is their home. Okay, but really see how you move around. I did recently have doors on these sides here, but I found them too um, obstructive for um, an exhibition. So the sides get really close. It's meant to be quite open and airy, and even the plants are meant to breathe in this kind of way as well, funnily enough. Um, so, yeah, I just want it to be nice and easy and accessible. This is half the board, so it's what I wanted to, um, to show on the screen so I could talk it through with you guys a bit more. Um, as I said, the words divided into three, um, three pieces. I have to take a great shot on them. I have to think about how to cover the words, how to treat it. That will be a part of the process. Um, but they have a bit of Japanese waxing, which I found quite interesting. The wall is tablet. Uh, material I'm particularly fond of. This is where I didn't source it locally. I sourced it from Morocco. Uh, the reason for that was I didn't think it was too far a distance compared to other places that we um, source materials from. 
And it's long lasting. It's mold resistant, it's good in the heat, has a lot of benefits. And I thought, if you're going to be using a product for a long time, I can justify you getting that overseas. It's when we have things up to starting like so rapidly. And that's why I can't support the rest of the And the wallpaper that I found as well. Uh, this is from uh, Eco Paper. This is made from recycled paper and it is also biodegradable. The way you can put this up is with cornstarch uh, and uh, sugar water. You don't have to use the chemicals to put up uh, wallpaper if you do not need it. Um, these are the bubble table examples. Just to show you the difference of tons of woods, um, these are the ones that I did see in the forest when I was there. So that's just give you an idea around that. Um, these are the sconces. Again, to a continent, not to be too worried about it. Let me take a little bit of fun with that. Um, iron bars, these would be for the vacuum bookcase and for the coffee tables. This is the shelving, the felled wood, or we use upcycled woods. Some that are that I haven't really discussed yet. Um, there was, if I just look back quickly to see if you can recognize. This chair here, this is a bespoke design chair, hanging around the idea of a circle. That's going to be an iron frame, it's actually called bamboo. Um, there's a lot that's been said about bamboo. Uh, some people say how great it is. Um, others say that you can't grow it here. You actually can grow it here. The problem with it is, is that it takes over the whole ecosystem. It's the problem bamboo, it's grass. I found a supplier in Scotland, two actually, that can just clove bamboo. So I can source that from here. So again, I want to experiment with that idea. Um, we'll talk about that in a minute. Let's have fun with that. These are the materials. These are the Q-milks. These are the colours that we can get out of that. And this is the thing in text. That's just using the top end for the thing in text. Um, so again, I don't use it too much. I use more uh, local materials. And there was a rug in the design as well. You see this in the red, really short and wide. Um, the rugs are all made from recycled plastic. I found the company that made rugs out of plastics from the garbage patch. So I want to encourage you, you want us to take away from it. And after this, this is the space once it's been rendered. So this was the design in the end. There is um, some elements that aren't on the sound board, so I'm just going to talk about those quickly. There are lampshades. These are the willow that you find in the palm. Most of the colours, and that's just started to be the colour scheme that, um, that I went with. Uh, but the main aim behind this project was I just wanted to design. Um, I, I like to challenge design sustainably, but I believe that it should actually be just a natural part of the process now. You know, design first and figure out ways to do it sustainably. The answer to that, I think, is a lot of research. Um, so yeah, this is my design. Make less, use more. Okay. Are you ready? Yeah, so sure. please. So the, the brief was for you to be a sustainable uh, space. Yes. I, I mean, it's, it's an interesting uh, large concept of working place. And the way you took it is that you found uh, materials that you can recycle, uh, reuse, uh, so it's you, you focus on the material itself. You buy by because you can design the material, and then that's, that's, um, that's how you automatically move forward. Yeah. But as, as an architect, what I think about is the design itself. You know, I learned the material. I, I, what I would have liked to see is like what IKEA did when they designed the kitchen. Okay. They, they studied the patterns of people using the kitchen, how they do the kitchen, what is the most efficient way, how they go there and there, and they create a triangle, and they move it too far, they get something else. Sure. But out of that pattern, they created the ideal scenario of how the kitchen could be designed. So what should be next to each other? And they by the patterns of movement of people or the way that people function in space. I, I would have liked to see, or just like, you know, also, I think you can add into this, okay, choosing the material, choosing the, the type of furniture, this guy, besides that, I think there's a bigger picture here. 
How can you make our lifestyle the way we need to function, the way we function more sustainable? Mm -hmm. And many people look like that, then you start to realize that we actually are very wasteful the way we need to function. Yeah. In many ways, a small space like that could have multiple functions. Mm -hmm. We touched it a little bit with the bio, uh, uh, bio function of some of the products. Why is it the space is bio, bio function? Like I always give this example when I, I talk to students about design. A car is a great design. Fantastic design. You know, it's high for luxuries, speeds, you know, uh, now digital and everything else. You can shake out the car and the speed. So you lost that. Yeah. When you park it there, when it sits there, it has no function at all. It's useless. Yeah. It doesn't do anything. It's there. It's like this car has a very big. That is a poor design. In my view today, what is the byproduct of this car? What does could this car do more, more than when it sits there on its own? When there's no inhabitants, there are no people using it. But it's dormant. Yeah. yeah. Can can there be a byfunction? Like your space could have the same as so in, in in our design when we were suggesting that the car could be a street car, So we do speed and grow the street as people walk by and then do it again. Depending on the interaction, it's done. Suddenly, the car becomes an object that has a lot of other function within the car. Yeah. It's your space. I think that there is a there is an opportunity to think about in terms of sustainability, whether the space could how the space could be defined in multiple ways that limited space could suddenly go into multiple use, multiple functions. Then you start to think about. Holding structure, then you start to think about inflatables, then you start to think about energy and uh, like you know interaction because the space constantly interacts with you and there's a lot of data in there. How can you use that data to make it more uh, efficient for your use of the space? There's only yeah. opportunities to be to, to, to explore that we can add on to the design that we come up with besides. Resource in the table, if you know what I mean. It's the yeah. method of living, there's a, the, the way we do things, technology, uh, body function, uh, like you know, looking at like the kinetic sculptures and then suddenly uh, exploring this kinetic structure that comes out and becomes something else within your uh, design, your furniture, the, the couch furniture, the table furniture could form into something else. That becomes something else. Maybe yeah, sometimes the fire teaching of something. You know, like we can a little bit time outside the box. But when we so just just I think that would that would enrich your design a lot more. Sure. No, I understand what you mean. I understand. There were some things I did look at to do that. Um, one was looking at making these tables uh, if they worked a different function. I thought about people having exercise at home a lot more now. I facilitate this. Originally, I didn't have the divider. Um, the idea was actually the desk could fold up, so it was purely entertainment, or it could fold down and make it to more of a games room kind of activity. Uh, I also looked as well at what we populate the shelves with. Um, but I will concede I didn't pursue those ideas. I did actually pursue more of the sourcing of the materials. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's, it's became, the project became sourcing of materials yeah. and reusing the materials in a certain way. And there's nothing wrong with it, but I think there is a lot more in terms of the sustainability when you think about it, the pattern, the way of doing things in our daily life, how we can enhance this, and how can the space technology uh, interaction which define the space that we interact in, in, in a lot more efficient way we might be and sustainable while we decide. Like you know, you talked about your friends your passion patterns and your creative energy. Yeah. You know, you could have uh, made a scenario where you create energy on the floor that lights your interest in lighting. Or you can you can like you know introduce a, a sporting corner where you punch uh, a bag and that vibration creates energy. Or you know, you you create a sport activity. But at the same time, you're creating story energy for something else. You know, it says that yeah. it always is a sign of like, or some additional. Yeah, actually, one that I did look at was uh, was bikes. 
power of battery. Um, and this came from uh, when I used to go to uh, parties when I was younger. And they would actually be someone there if I could leave it, and we had to take it in turns to do that. Um, I found out that they were very low energy, but again, if I. Uh, yeah, and, and at the moment, you will get better and better by reaching yeah. them to all our expenditures and stuff. And I think you could, there might be you know, these little niches that you can look at, like, oh, we could use this, this, you know, we need to get into the living rooms. Uh, there's always a wall with the TV that we can stand the couches to look at the coding thing in our life. But we're moving in a way that these things are changing. And what that like change? Uh, well, one that could have been an interesting idea would have been um, I hear a lot from people that have children now is their children use a few screens, iPads, they love the iPad. It's an idea that I just had now your suggestion. Could be you have some that you, the child needs to generate power somehow, like you know, do some jobs on something or recycle a little tricycle. Once you've built up enough energy. Then you have enough energy to use the iPads. So you can actually encourage behaviors like that. Um, yeah, I do agree about it. Yeah, I think it would be interesting to take it that kind of thing, like standing here with how the human side is set for 2000 months ago. It's incredible. Yeah. In the 1960s, you know, right? yeah. it's, it's incredible because the guy came up with scenarios for thinking like what the spaceship could be on, on those days. And uh, then he back with gravity and then he came up with. Ways of cinematography to give that like analog installations. Yeah. It's a fantastic installation. Yeah. What he did. And we look at the camera and how do you do it? Yeah. Because there's a lot of smart strategies. You know, the camera is fixed, but the you know the thing spins, but the camera is fixed, and you think that the whole thing is like the guy going up to a thermal Yeah. That, that kind of smart strategies, you know. Very quickly, very explosive. Yeah, I think mean, I do feel like this is more of a, um, uh, a bit of a like catalog yeah. exhibition. I, I, I didn't understand as much. Make, uh, make less, use more. What do you mean by that? So, um, make in less. terms of, you know, Great using those materials to create, create metals. You produce kind of less material, use more. Produce that, kind of then try to recycle where and when you can. That was the idea. But also, as well, in terms of um, making less, making less kind of petrol to transport the goods. You know, think about it, more expanding like that. And just trying to localize things a lot more. Um, and I, I actually found that um, the concept's a bit more about looking at people trying to buy things to make themselves happy um, which is that psychology of it's new it's new but actually I think review what we have and try and repurpose that. Mm -hmm. I, I love I love furniture. There's um there's a design that I found in uh, in East London and he does these amazing um cupboards and he makes them out of like brown pieces of coffee tables. We you know the ones where you put the gap in between stacks them together and repubs them will be like old um like wooden signs. It's all mismatched and fun because of that. It's, to me, it's not this new image. So I kind of tried to use that. Again, I was trying to, I actually did a little bit of trends as well. I looked at a lot of magazines. I was trying to fit into the, um, the markets and trying to change consumer own habits. So yeah. that's the main thing. So I believe that all these flaws that it comes down to, as I said, it's a detriment to the fact that the human uh, race has on the planet for their own enjoyment. So I think, you know, that's, that's when you need to hit the problem, it's about how the consumer buys, how the consumer approaches their designs. Um, so that's what I was trying to showcase here. Um, I, did, I did look into lifestyle as well, but um, yeah, this is meant to be a bit more, uh, I, did, I, I also just wanted to design something that looks what I felt at the end as well. Yeah. You, do you have any? I think <coughs> from... The way you were using it was I said you know, it's sustainable because it the quotes are pretty so it's sustainable there's always the quotes are pretty so it's it's there are people are my especially if you're inside of you because you be always for this person is example so you're always making feedback regarding to a choice type of I think it's what's interesting in this one is 
I I understand that the sexual exhibition piece this is supposed to be exhibited to people. I, mean, I understand it's in my understanding, the reasoning of coming out with the design of that is something more or interesting or or contemporary or how you put it is to show people you know with 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 the maybe maybe your gay guidance or the more I don't know, maybe it's probably this is like a living. Yeah, it's scary. It's gonna be a living community. Someone, someone, someone. It's good to show people that you know, you might be coming, you see all the materials. Maybe you have your tags on the on the items from the tables, and you must check the, check this tags, and you see actually these are all either credible, credible, credible or recycled, recycled items. So people can have this understanding of okay, next time if I need to buy a college, I don't need to go to. I can I can just go to the 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 factory factory facility and buy it and go and get something from that. But other than that, I I also agree as as this is a project it should be doing more somehow more. I I understand there's there's a lot of thinking behind everything we see, but also. I don't know. I, I feel like it could be good to have in the trying and your development, just what I don't want to see. They're more uh, experiments and they're experimenting in both. But also, it, it's a design thing, right? Because uh, I, I think that the exhibition piece should be done in the show in the morning and in certain cases. It's, it's, so there's also an art art part of it. And I think it's, it's an art work that it was supposed to it's, it's different. It's, it's, it's not it's not that would be the first thing that to my mind is when I talk about sustainability. So it's it's interesting. Yeah, I want, I want to play around with that to kind of highlight in that. That was very much the idea behind two scenes off. I, I, I don't think it would happen in there at home. It might work for an outdoor piece. But it was actually, that was put in there more as an artistic pursuit. Um, and it was a bit the same with the egg chair as well. So there were those elements. Um, but I, I do agree as well that um, I would have liked to have made it a bit more interactive. Yeah, I played around with a lot of other ideas. I uh, thought about how children would like to use the area and whatnot. But yes, yeah, as, as I said, it was, it was about, as you just highlighted, it's showcasing a different way of designing. It was sad, like they wanted a bit of a capital theme to it as opposed to a high street retail. Also, it's good to, I, I saw your, you know, all the designs. I think it's, this one has a more finished feel, more, it's more constructive. Okay, I'll go to the other ones. I think I can see, I can see any movement. Yeah, I've got, um, just for like that point in public, there was, there's more of a jelly agent here than with the others. I'm very prone to splashing ideas. <laughs> it's ten a thousand and one things. Um, but I did actually, yeah, I did actually try to read it in a bit myself with this design and say that it can't be the most common dog piece you can see. It's actually this chair. Trying to combine woods, purple, and, uh, and rocks. It's quite a fun idea. <laughs> uh, there, oh, by the way, before I forget, there was one more thing I didn't add the pillows and the filling as well. That's made from upside plastic. Again, this kind of going out there, they kind of like stretch it and it didn't fill. Um, so, and that's I mean, the one thing that I personally feel like a bit miss. Um, I don't feel like there's enough describing why it's sustainable. Um, and that's a personal thing. I think that people might come in here and look at it and go, oh, this is cool. Yeah, I mean, I, mean, I, mean, I, I imagine coming into this space, I'll look at it. Okay, this is like, you know, the furbished materials. Um, you know, it's a collected of various backgrounds or history. You know, I understand that. 
However, I think there is a lot more room to push boundaries of sustainability because it should be quickly more than concurrent and correct materials and subjects and decide to go out and decide that this is a different group. That could be a lot more. That, yeah. I, I, I feel like. But we should, we should explore further. And then uh, it's not anymore addressing the room. It's more a, a uh, investigation into what could be. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, and, and uh, well, I've worked on this project as well. And, um, so I don't know if you need to say about Used to call us things based on materials that already exist. Each of those mimic cotton and leather, which are two materials that we all know. And some of the others I found was that was one material which is uh, it's like glass, it's made from the uh, mussels and oysters that are in the River Thames. They have to be removed to benefit the ships. So I know I called that was so I actually designed this for actually benefiting something else. Um, there was another company as well that made uh, tiles, so those ceramic tiles, out of the skull of coffee and um, the shell of shellfish. Um, and those, those were really interesting. I feel like that would have been, as, as you say, that would have been a bit more, this isn't just a case of using something that's quite new and novel, that there is actually a benefit to us using this. Um, I think sustainability is a really tricky, tricky subject. In the other day, most of the sustainable practices we we know and follow, they're actually really expensive practices. For example, wind mills, the big farms, cycling companies, they're really large scale, large scale uh, operation operations. I mean, we need government or corporation to. I, I, I think this is a more a personal level, because this is basically what we look at. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's more directed towards people in London. So, like, I can see this that example of a credit credit of, like, for example, I have 75 years old. I'm aware of cycling and sustainability, and you know, if I want it, that is my view. Of course, to me, this is what I'm going to do. I can't do it, but I can just go and invent something from scratch. I would just go and try to. Some of you are very cautious about this. me myself. I don't take one. Yeah, this, this, I can get, I, I, I personally, I personally categorize this as a you know, more personal, personal based sustainability. Yeah. Yeah, but for example, uh, why I say to be more is uh, I think if you keep yourself free to work with, you know, when I think about the nature, and the buy for buy for instance is very strong. In the place that I will show you in China, the eight. And the steam was displacing the people. Right. And because uh, of the war, the market was destroyed. Right. And uh, in his piece, Jim Jarrett is a fashion designer. In his uh, catwalk, he created uh, a living room. And then the bodies. Coming to the living room, and uh, there will be like a table that works. And the table had a clip in the open, the one that was open the table, and that was open with the foot, and then put it up and it's square, right. and then the table is open. And that would be for square, the table would be for square. And that was the kind of shot. Yeah, because he, that was the that, that was the key. It's basically yeah. the key. What he was trying to tell that. People are displaced, and all they all they take is like their beauty. Yeah. And how they take they their beauty, so they take what they can carry, what they can gather into. And he just took that idea, turned it into fashion. I'm, I'm not this yeah, genius. Cool. You know what I mean? It's genius. It's, that that is a fantastic idea. Yeah. And uh, what I would like to see is like that kind of a little bit pushing boundaries. Like how can we make this sustainability to your side? What is your theme that you use? Like, is it byproducts, byproducts, or something? Inflatables, this, that, and the other thing. Oh, it's so many ideas. 
like would like is this a fact? Would sorry, would be some like if there was a fabric that you can wear and go, it becomes very really check. Still, but it's it's very simple idea that is yeah. not before because I'm giving that example that makes me think about it. But you know, you can imagine you you wear your concept and then go to go to work. Yeah, you know that that kind of very silly, very uh dramatic ideas, but that's what the couch is a color which is not using that yeah. in the days so yeah. because exactly. you feel like it's color exactly. you can use it yeah. as and it becomes your winter jacket yeah. and when you take up go outside. But that's why I think these projects are for you to push yourself to be outside of the box. I think that's what school is all about. Something that could be done could have been like the like the blanket, for example, that we use as a kind of I'm just giving you an example. I don't know what you get in St. John's 19, I think it was that uh, this place in the war exhibition. The good one girl comes and wears the, the table, the other one comes and uh, kind of takes the chair or whatever. Everything is like kind of transformed, and then they wear these furniture and take them away and then walk away. Yeah. So that's the first thing. That's just. Right. This design is just for this whole production based on the English. Both of the skirts that they used to have I can't remember I saw it like two weeks ago. But yeah, it's, it's, it's cool. but it, it captures the imagination, doesn't it? Exactly. It captures people's exactly. attention. You know, it suddenly becomes something interesting. You know, it gives you ideas of like, you know, what it means for these people to stay back in board and you just take it away. Yeah, I mean, I, I was in, um, I was actually in Serbia when the screen actors were from over. Yeah, it's just seeing that in reality. Yeah. Um, we're very interested in the production based on that. Well, look, thank you very much for taking the time. Okay. Thank you.